Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at a late 2014 Mac Mini running Catalina. As usual, anything I talk about is going to be linked in the description below. And if you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section. Let's jump right into this. So first some specs on the machine that I'm going to be using in this video. Like I mentioned, it's a late 2014 Mac Mini. It's got a fourth generation i5 at 2.6 gigahertz. That's a dual core processor, 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM a 256 gigabyte SSD and the Intel Iris 5100 graphics with 1.5 gigs dedicated to that GPU. As far as usability and port selection on this machine, it's got a great array of ports for such a small machine. It's got a gigabit ethernet port, an HDMI port, that's an HDMI 1.4 port, two Thunderbolt 2 ports, four USB 3 ports, an SDXC card reader, uh, audio in jack and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. In addition to those ports, it's also got 802.11 AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.0. So basically it has just about everything you need even by today's standards. As far as performance of this machine for day-to-day -day activities, this machine performs great, very little slowdowns, even with that dual core processor. Again, the version that I have has 16 gigs of RAM. So that helps a lot with multitasking, multiple desktops, stuff like that. But I very rarely saw slowdowns on this machine just with general tasks. It handles multiple monitors great you can plug a HDMI cable into the HDMI port on the Mac mini and into one monitor and then get a uh, Thunderbolt 2 or display port to HDMI adapter to plug into one of those Thunderbolt 2 ports output to another monitor easily have dual displays that's how I have it set up behind me here that works absolutely great now, one place that performance does suffer on this machine is with anything that's graphically intensive, such as 3D work, gaming, some video production stuff. That integrated uh, Intel Iris 5100 GPU is not super powerful. It's great for day-to-day -day activities and things like that, but for other graphically intensive stuff, it is not a great GPU. So just keep that in mind as we go into the next section, which is the benchmarking. So in this section, I did do some synthetic benchmarks, which you should not base your decision to buy a machine solely off synthetic benchmarks, but it does give you kind of a rough guideline to compare different machines. So the first thing I ran was Cinebench, and in Cinebench, we got a score of 474 points, which is right on par for this processor. Next up was Geekbench. Uh, Geekbench, we got a single core score of 739 and a multi-core score of 1618. Then on the graphical benchmarking for Geekbench, we got an OpenCL score of 4312. So last up is Unigen Heaven, and Unigen Heaven's used to test out the graphical performance. So of course, these scores are going to be a little bit low because of that integrated GPU. But we got a score of 262 with an average frames per second of 10.4. We had a max of 18.7 and a minimum of 5.4. So not great scores, but kind of what I was expecting for this integrated GPU. Next up is gaming, and I would not recommend this machine for gaming. I was able to play some games at low settings. I could play some CSGO with everything set lowest. Uh, things like RimWorld, that works fine. But anything more intensive, it's really suffering from this GPU, and it's not really designed to be a gaming machine. Now, for emulation and stuff like that, if you want to use it for that, it would work fine. But uh, otherwise, I would just kind of pass on this if gaming is a priority for you. Last area, as always, is video editing, and it, it was a mixed bag on this one in Final Cut Pro uh, using MP4 H.264 4K files. I was able to scrub through those, play them back, add transitions and stuff natively. I didn't have to create any optimized media or proxy media. And with just a very basic timeline, it actually worked really, really well. Uh, anything more when you start adding color correction effects and stuff like that, it starts to slow down a little bit. So you'll want to use proxy media at that point. If you're doing 1080p, it's not a problem. This is a great machine for editing 1080p. So next up, I used DaVinci Resolve, loaded those same files in, and didn't have as great an experience. I was still able to scrub through the files, but the playback was hit and miss. I would say it was more miss than hit on this machine. Uh, it would normally not get up to full frames, uh, even with setting the resolution a little bit lower and things like that. Uh, it didn't really make a difference. So if you're doing 4K on this machine in DaVinci Resolve, you're definitely gonna wanna make proxy or optimized media to make that performance a little bit better. If you're doing 1080p, it's not an issue. You should be able to 
play that without having to do any proxy media. And with that proxy media, everything works fine. So if you're looking for a budget 4K editing machine, you could actually get away with it on this machine. You just gotta be a little bit patient while that proxy media generates. So all in all, this is a great little machine, even by today's standards. Catalina runs great on it. It's fully supported, absolutely no problem. You can pick these machines up for around 300 bucks in the configuration that I got, or a little bit cheaper if you go with the version that has the eight gigs of RAM and the Fusion Drive in it. But if you're looking for a very small compact machine to run day-to-day -day activities and some light video editing, this may be the way that you want to go. Thanks so much for stopping by. Again, if you have any questions or comments, leave those down in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next video.